Go ahead. All right. We're going to go ahead and start. My name is Keith Michael Asaki. I'm the CEO of GTC Systems, and I wanted to welcome you. Uh, those of you who are here uh, at GTC's office in Scripps Ranch, San Diego, and then we have several people on the webinar. So thank you for taking, giving us the lunch hour to be with us. Um, as you know, we do this uh, every week, 12 to 1 during the lunch hour every Thursday. And we uh, usually uh, have one of our uh, top partners sponsor uh, the lunch here and sponsor this hour. They come in and give you a technology update. Today we have with us EG Innovations. And I just wanted to say a couple of words before I turn it to Parthi, the systems engineer from EG. As you, many of you know, we, one of our top focuses is VDI, virtual desktop infrastructure, specifically using Citrix. And we also do VMware. But most of the VDI projects that we've done um, since early in 1995, since we started, you know, I go back all the way to WinView and then WinFrame, MetaFrame, Presentation Server, ZenApp, and then now Zen Desktop. Um, a lot of times, you know, you, you know, when you do this kind of computing, basically host the desktop or a virtual app in the data center, you're basically taxing the entire system. So at some point, when you roll out hundreds or thousands of virtual desktops or virtual apps, there's going to be problems. There will be problems. And always, Citrix gets blamed because it's a different way of doing a computing. But a lot of times, you know, and Party is going to go through this, um, a lot of times it's really, it could be a network or a storage or a database or, a, or a, an active directory issue or a virus like recently with one of the, you know, it, could, it, it, it was like a virus. The antivirus was broadcasting every 20 minutes. The, um, there were too many VMs on a certain LUN in storage. There was storage configuration issue. And in one case where we tested it, it was a Cisco Nexus switch issue. You know, we had the Citrix team and the Cisco team, you know, so the Citrix team started using the tool and we pinpointed a Cisco Nexus issue. There was latency on the VDI. And this was a big customer in Arizona. And I, I was in the room with our CTO and we got the Cisco guy and he started being defensive about it because the network people they don't want to you know you don't want to tell tell them it's the network the network problem so but our CTO told you know told him first of all when he was starting being defensive he told him happy Friday man you know I'm just here to help have Dan your Citrix guy go get you a beer first you know and let's talk about this and then he showed him told him do you see do you really do you see it you know he pointed to it using this tool something on the Nexus switch he said yeah man and then defenses went down and then we started having a very useful conversation so from our perspective we're trying to help customers make VDI deployments successful so when you start rolling out hundreds and thousands especially whether it's healthcare or financial or law firms especially when it's healthcare when there is multiple users doctors and nurses depending on it um, and there is latency and there's problems with VDI and multiple users cannot access, we want to reduce troubleshooting time. If we can reduce it from three hours to 30 minutes or less than that, then that's big value for us. So we have recently, after years of working with EG, have decided that this is for us the best tool because it gives us a holistic approach looks at the entire environment, kind of like a general practitioner, to use healthcare terms. 80% of the problems, like the CEO of EG Innovations always says, 80% of the problems a general practitioner can solve. But then, when you pinpoint an area, then you still, you know, we're not asking you to do away with all the tools that you have. You're going to need some specific tool, and most of the vendor tools will focus on their technology. Like, for example, Citrix Edge Side, and we're a Citrix house. We'll focus on the Citrix servers, but the problem may not be there. So that's why, after all this time, we have um, decided that, you know, and we, we are introducing even Citrix managed services. Because a lot of times we find out when many of our customers roll out Citrix and they have one or, one or two of their people quit, or they don't have the right process in place, then they are 
they experience a lot of pain. So we've introduced managed services where we go and basically control completely manage the Citrix environments as an extension of their team. And we've decided that this tool will be the tool that we're going to use to help us you know, pinpoint problems much faster. So um, I'm going to turn it now to Parthi. He's the engineer with, uh, with EG Innovations. And he will give you even a demo of how simple this technology is. Because a lot of the other tools, whether it's OpenView or Splunk or anything else like that, sometimes requires a PhD to be able to decipher you know, and learn it. I, 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 just to prepare for this today, again, just to refresh my memory, I listened to uh, web webinars. You know, there's even webinars um, on, on YouTube that you can look at even after today. And we're going to record this session. You can watch it later. Um, it's so simple. You know, even I, who I don't come from a technical background, you know, I'm basically sales, marketing, and management, I could follow and understand, and I could probably, you know, uh, use it myself. So now I will turn it to Parthi. Thank you, Parthi. Thank you, Keith. I would like to thank the audience for taking time. And uh, so I'm Parthi. I've been with EG Innovations for a little over seven years. And I will start with a brief introduction about what EG Innovation is for the benefit of people who has not heard about us. We are a full-fledged end-to-end monitoring solution. What I mean by that is when you have different technologies like Citrix, VMware, Microsoft Hyper-V, uh, heterogeneous infrastructure where there is a lot of connectivity between different monitoring tools, there are different silos, you need a holistic view. We support nine different virtualization out of the box, physical or virtual, an application sitting on top of it, virtual desktop virtualization or server virtualization. Everything can be covered out of the box. The focus for today is going to be VDI specific because VDI is a hot topic and the complexity which VDI brings into the table is also higher. So what happens is when, when you virtualize your desktop, the end user doesn't care whether it's a physical or you virtualized, you use Citrix or VMware. He is expecting the same performance when he had a PC or a laptop. So the performance standards has to be same or if not higher because you're investing the money and the time in the VDI rollout. So what we're going to do is we're going to phase out the different VDI rollout phases starting from the test pilot and then to production and try to avoid surprises because normally pilot everything is fine few users things are rosy you could log in work fine but when you hit production that is user issues so how does eg innovation eg's vdi performance monitoring solution is going to help your make your life easier in terms of pinpointing the root cause make sure you fix all the problems in the pilot stage and move on to the production with less or minimal user complaints. So the topic for today is VDI performance management, moving desktop virtualization from test to test. The agenda would be, I would try to introduce the software a little bit and then talk about the virtualization trend, how the market is shaping up and, and in terms of the market space, how many uh, verticals are taking up the VDI rollout and uh, why does a VDI rollout fail? That That is the million dollar question. Okay, we, we agreed upon VDI, why is it failing? And then the five best practices in VDI delivery. About the company, we've been around a little over a decade. We, we have a global presence uh, and uh, we have offices in New York, New Jersey, in, in, in Southern California. We have 300 enterprise customers, 700 customers to manage service providers. Uh, we are Citrix ready certified, VMware ready certified, SAP certified. What it means that it doesn't matter what hypervisor or virtualization technology you're using, you could use this solution to maintain the performance level or we would help you pinpoint the potential cost. It's, it's not specific to a technology. This is not a VMware specific tool or a Citrix. It's, it's a tool which can cater across different technologies. The next is a key customer list, JP Morgan Chase. 
we, we monitor thousand servers starting from middle tier applications, databases, front end servers, Citibank. It's not in a just a single vertical. We, we are into insurance, uh, federal firms and uh, private organizations. So we have customers who have six to ten servers and we also have customers who have thousands of servers. So we are completely scalable. Okay. I'm going to start with the VDA adoption stages. At any point, if you have any questions, you feel don't don't hesitate. Let's keep this interactive. Just go ahead with your question. What are the different stages in a VDA adoption? First, you get the approval. You start a test bed, a couple of servers, and you start working on it. Deploy a few dozen desktops, and typically use free licenses because it's a test. Everything is good. You plan to move on to the pilot stage. Then become 100 desktops. You have 100 desktops, the test technology feasibility, you do the feasibility study, uh, will it scale up, all those theoretical uh, concepts are being implemented. Small work group load, rollout. You, you pick a cross section in your company or your organization and say that, okay, this particular department is going to test out the VDA rollout. Based on that, we'll get a feel about the VDA usage, how the end user performance is, so that we could get to the next level. And the final stage or, or the key stage will be the VDA production. That is when you see a drastic difference. The reality hits, okay? Things were good in pilot. How did the production fail? Why is it failing in the production? This, this particular gap, this is the section where EG innovation plays a key role and makes this transition much easier, okay? So you don't have any surprises like you're trying to scale, you are, you're bringing in the whole organization, so if it fails, it's, it's, it's a lot of money and time. So we would make sure that your performance level is going to remain the same uh, in during all these phases. And finally, having a solution is good. It, it's going to pinpoint you the potential root causes in the infrastructure, but once you retain a level, uh, like in life, it's not just reaching a level, it's about sustaining and staying there on the top, right? So. The VDA acceleration, when you want to do trend analysis, you want to maintain the level of SLA, we would also help you with that with our in-depth reporting capabilities. Okay, first is the test phase. What we do is we focus on access, compare different technologies, talk to Citrix, VMware, Hyper-V, uh, gain hands-on experience in the technologies. Typically, there's no challenges at that phase. You're just deciding what what kind of vendor you're going to pick and you're going to go through. Focus would be on assessing the desktop, whether the basic functionality like the booting of the desktop, all those functions are working fine, uh, whether, the, whether the desktop, once they are booted up, are they able to interact with the SAN and storage devices. So all the technology level interdependencies are being tested at this phase. So occasionally there might be a performance issue, but that would be manually fixed because it's a smaller footprint, a couple of servers, so the admin has a pretty good understanding about what could have failed, so he could get away in this particular stage. But the problem is in the production stage, where the numbers are huge. You're talking about hundreds, if not thousands of servers. It's manually impossible, especially in VDI infrastructure, when hundreds of users are logging in and they are using application, you cannot have visibility. Like it's not easy for you to open up task managers or use silo tools to get visibility about all those hundreds or thousand desktops. That is when you need a performance monitoring solution, which not only looks into the physical servers, it can also look into the desktop from a user perspective. Keep in mind, EG's VDA performance monitoring, the way we differ from other vendors in the market is we don't treat VDA monitoring as server monitoring. Virtual desktop monitoring is different from virtual server monitoring. The challenge is when you give a desktop to a user, he can control the desktop. Whereas in a virtual server, it's an enterprise server which is hosting Oracle or database. So you have to look at it from a user perspective. That is what we do. So typical challenges in the production infrastructure are performance issues and typical performance issues, user complaints. I'm, I'm trying to access my desktop. Already the user is in a mindset. They, they have removed my laptop. They've taken away my PC. So now I, now I have to log into some remote machine, which I don't know where it is, and my, my level of access is limited. So obviously you're going to see a lot of user complaints in terms of my session is freezing out. I can't load my desktop. 
those kind of general feedback over provisioning okay what this is the most common thing when the complaint happens like users start saying that okay we can't access the desktop is really slow uh, the quick fix the, the only option is uh, the admin gets freaked out and they talk to the mid level manager and the manager is saying you know what we've already spent a lot of money on it why not throw some hardware on it some storage devices let's see if that helps without even having any data to baseline what is going on what is the cause is it the IOPS or CPU or memory you just throw the hardware in it so over provisioning is a common syndrome at this phase we would help you avoid that there is not going to be any guesswork we will do trend analysis for you and tell you what is the current performance when you increase the user con what resources you need to have okay the question is but why is that there is a performance problem in the production everything was great during twilight why is my production suffering it's, it's a simple question but the answer is tough any questions so far Brenda? okay BDA rollout fails so it's a graphical representation you look at the number of desktops here and the response times so VDA pilot it's it's normally good the users say the response time is good when when you go to the production because there is tons of user logging in one user who is not using the desktop in the right way can affect the performance of another user he is not running a business critical application he's streaming a video that will definitely have an impact on the other VDA session those kind of failures is what would hit the production so the problems would be user complaints about slow application and VDA initiation stops. So you tested the pilot, you're thinking about production, you will start saying that it's slow, I, we, we can't access it. So the, so the management gets into a dilemma and, and the initiator, it's not, the rollout is not happening. Desktop competing for same resources, which is common. When you have a shared resources, multiple users log in, they're gonna fight for the same resources. So that has to be optimized. Throwing hardware, which we mentioned, uh, which I mentioned, so let's move on. The broken VDA deployment cycle. So these are the different phases. I'm not going to dwell on this. Is this like you assess, you plan and design? This is the typical cycle. Okay, VDA, how hard can it be? So this is what the user sees. Nothing else is uh, relevant for him. For him, he has to log in. He has to go about doing his job. Simple as that. The login screen could be a Citrix receiver or a VMware related receiver or a simple uh, HDX or a PC over IP session. Once he logs in, he wants to see the application which is available for him. So everything looks straightforward. User perspective, I start my device, log on and expect the same experience I had with my physical desktop. That's, that's the bottom line. Doesn't matter what, how many millions has been spent, he has to get the same fear, feel which he had when he was using his personal PC or laptop. That's the end goal. Why is VDA hard? We, we keep saying that VDA is complex. VDA, VDA brings in a lot of benefits. Uh, benefits mixed with complexity. It's, it's not the olden age where it was a client server technology. You have a fat client sitting there and the end user will have a client end and he will directly jump into the server, access the application. With VDI, there are a lot of moving parts. Let's take this scenario here. A user is connecting from an end client. There is a connection broker. It could be a Citrix delivery broker or it could be a VMware view. It doesn't matter. We support both the connection brokers out of the box. If you have third-party connection brokers like Leo Stream connection brokers, we also support that. So it doesn't matter what vendor is there. So connection broker is a key part in terms of the provisioning the desktop. And then you have the individual hypervisors. It could be VMware, it could be Citrix. So the hypervisor which is delivering the desktop. And you have the backend, uh, backend uh, virtual center which is managing your VMware stuff, Oracle databases, and the key piece of any desktop virtualization which is storage and the switches. So it's, it's, it's a complex picture. If you have So it's a complex picture. So if you imagine having monitoring solutions, obviously any infrastructure network team will have a monitoring tool. SAN team, the storage team will say that we have the tools which are provided by OEM. So 
IOPS is doing good. We have enough IOPS to handle this production infrastructure. Network, they sniff the package, they look at the network stack, everything is fine. So obviously this would lead into finger pointing. There is also licensing server and the Microsoft shop like the file server, Active Directory, etc. So looking at this map, the first thing which strikes you is like, okay, I thought it should be simple, right? I, I, the user gets a desktop, it's a problem, I should be able to fix it. But look at it from an admin perspective. He, the failure, the cause of the failure can be lying in any one of these pieces. So the challenge is, okay, so when a user says it's a problem, where do I start the troubleshooting? So that's, that's the biggest question because the expertise are always there. You, you hire an admin who has the understanding of the technology but he doesn't know where the problem is. So he'll be going across all these servers to, to find the problem. Complexity. Add virtual machine, connection broker, profile server, provisioning server, a lot of opportunity for things to go wrong impact user experience which I just mentioned. Okay. How is the VDA infrastructure managed today? We have all these pieces here, provisioning server, switches, Citrix pieces, Oracle, licensing server. What you have is you have isolated silo solution. What's the problem in having a silo solution? It gives in-depth visibility. You talk about Oracle, you have Oracle Enterprise Manager. You have VCOps for VMware, which is, which is much developed now when it was. All the data is there, but what is the challenge? It's not just about the data, how the data is being used. Give us a solution which can correlate and avoid the manual work of an admin and tell us, okay, there are multiple failures here. I don't need to see all these noises. I just need a solution which can tell me where the cost is and segregate the cost from the effects. So with silo solutions, you can't do that. You would have all these fancy graphs and in-depth information but there is no correlated visibility. That is the method which is being followed in the current VDI management. Okay, when a, when a service goes uh, down or a service is slow, you would see all these individual silo tools, network admin would say my main network stack is doing good, storage is doing good, the Microsoft shop, Active Directory, everything, the replication, everything is doing fine. So hands are raised. So finger pointing, it's not me, it's not me. Like Keith mentioned, eventually the guy at the front it gets hit which is Citrix or VMware virtual desktop. So where do I start? So from a VDA service manager, where do I start the troubleshooting? That's, that's the biggest challenge. It's not about the skill set available, it's about where to start the troubleshooting so that I could fix the problem much easier. Okay, again it's just a recap of for all the five pain points we have. VDA performance assurance, so it's, I'll skip this. So first, five best practices for VDI management. Monitor VDA services, not as silos. You have to look at the VDI infrastructure as a holistic service because you're delivering a service to the user, so monitoring them as silos would not cut it. And then right size for great ROI. Just because there is a problem, you buy storage, you buy a disk space and throw it, dump it in and that's not going to fix the problem. Without, you're just shooting in a blind direction without knowing that is the cost. Preemptive detection and alerting. Trying to be proactive rather than being rea reactive. You do a log analysis and all those stuff, you are still fighting the battle once you know that there is a problem. But with EG Innovations, we give you the information so that you could sustain the level of performance and be more proactive than being reactive. Monitor users, not just VMs, like I mentioned. Look at it from a user perspective. Only when a solution looks at it from a user perspective, it can understand the language and tell you that this user is getting affected. Deep visibility into sessions. If it's a Citrix session, we will look into the HTX protocol, or ICA protocol, and give you details about all the private channels. If it is PC or IP, we will look into the PC or IP protocol and give you whether there is latency, is it because of the compression value or the bandwidth, so in-depth visibility. You're not relying on vendor-specific tools who can't do much in a, another scenario. Let's, let's take an example of Citrix connection broker, and the desktops are being hosted on VMware. You would have Citrix HSI, you would have VCOps. They don't talk to each other. 
they don't have that connectivity. But with EG, you could monitor your connection broker and the VMware pieces and correlate that information. We'll tell you there are multiple technologies here, but this is the problem which is affecting the other pieces. Any any questions, guys? All good? Okay, so VDI is slow, VDI is not working, VDI freezes. It's easy for the user to say all these terms. I don't want to hit the same terms again. So if you look at the monitoring tool, the infrastructure admins are going to say, that, okay, I'm looking at all the graphs here, and I have fancy monitoring tools which, uh, which have wonderful graphs to display, and I, I don't see anything alarming here. Everything is fine. So that's the common pattern. User and IT management, that is a disconnect. Doesn't mean that the IT management doesn't have enough tool. They have a lot of tools in their toolkit, but nothing is serving this purpose of monitoring this service. This disconnect is a threat to the success of the transformation of IT initiatives, the promise of agility, scalability, and cost saving. So this disconnect has to be avoided. When a user is starting to face a problem, you should have the toolkits, your admin should have the toolkits to say that, okay, I've already notified or already identified the problem rather than the user coming and saying okay I can't log in now you start the troubleshooting purpose okay now let's start with EG this is how EG from this particular slide is how EG is going to help you look at a user session which is having a problem and tell you where is the cost and why is the user getting affected these are all the list of transactions this is a simulated transaction. We are trying to replicate a user activity. A user is trying to access a desktop. These are all transactions. A transaction is a key function done by an end user, like opening up a Citrix receiver or trying to log in or a browser ICS session, whatever it can be. So accessing desktop, browse open item, perform trade, log out, open folder trading. He's opening a desktop and he's trying to perform all the functions. And if you look at it, when the user is trying to access, the response time here is for accessing the desktop is 13 seconds. To browse open an item, it's two seconds. To perform a simple trade, you could be your opening a banking utility or transferring funds, it's taking seven seconds. Just the numbers, 12 seconds, seven seconds are alarming. User is not going to uh, sit in front of the system waiting for this function to be this slow. He, he's, he loses patience, then that's the time you're going to receive calls from the, to the help desk. So availability, response time, EG is looking at it. And I want to talk about the color coding here. With EG, there are three different color codings. Red is critical, orange is major, pink is proactive. I'll explain the course of color differences when I get through other slides, but please make a note that we are saying this is not a critical problem. User is having a problem, but we are not saying this is the cause of the problem. That's why EG system is saying it's a proactive alert, which means problem is not in the client end. So don't go hunting for the thousand end devices. Start the troubleshooting else because the problem is somewhere else. Then you click on it, you get to see this service topology. This is a patented technology with EG innovations. It's This provides the common term, even when, when Keith started the presentation, he said that holistic view, that's that's a key word. You see all these complex technology, different uh, vendors, network devices, clients, IIS, VDI server, Microsoft SQL server, file server, virtual center, all these pieces in your infrastructure, we group them. We don't just merely group them, we group them based on which part, where in the food chain they lie. So, you know, if something fails here, if the DDC fails here, what are all the applications which would be affected? So, auto-discovering all the infrastructure pieces and creating this mapping, this service topology, just imagine your help desk or knock team having this dashboard. They are not seeing fancy graphs or they are not seeing in-depth measures. They see the whole infrastructure in a single dashboard. For a, for a tier one knock team, who doesn't have the domain specific expertise, if you give this dashboard, he will clearly come and say that, okay, with EG's terminology, red is critical, so this hypervisor is having a problem. 
So at that point, you're cutting the mean time to repair a problem. You're not involving, involving your top level admins to identify where the problem, the tool has already done it for you and telling you is, yes, there are multiple failures here. There is a major problem in one of the hypervisors which is delivering the desktop. There is a proactive problem where the end user is seeing latency, but there is a critical problem in the VDA hyper, one of the hypervisors which is delivering the desktop. Virtual server monitoring solutions cannot give you the 360 view visibility. They focus on the virtualization platform only. This point I would take or try to talk about vendor specific tool. You could have VC ops, you could have Zen Center console to monitor it or edge site. They would only look at it from a, they treat it as a server. How much resource is being allocated but they are not looking at the user visibility. So that will not cut it for a VDI infrastructure. Okay, I, I saw that the, the hypervisor is having a problem. Now I see the 360 view. I click from a user view. I see the whole infrastructure. I know the problematic server. I'm going to click on the problematic server. Then I get to see the layer module stack. How different is this monitoring approach from any other tools? You have tools which, which sees through the window of network stack, which means they are limiting the scope of monitoring. But whereas we believe that when you're doing a performance monitoring, every application or any technology still has to rely on the seven presentation layers. Application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical layer. So we make sure we monitor the complete protocol stack for every application we support. Start with the operating system layer, make sure the server is sized properly, how much disk activity is going on, disk space, memory, page file. Then move on to the network. Look at individual network interfaces, see whether there is packet drops or the bandwidth usage is high. Then move a layer. If it is ESX or Zen server, we would tell you virtual network details. Your port groups, your virtual switches to the physical net configuration, make sure they are not having any problems. So look into every single layer. I go with the color coding, all the layers are doing good. The virtual desktop layer is having a problem. So that is the layer. I need to concentrate on. Hypervisor looks fine. The VM looks fine, which is what the virtual center say. User is affected, but still your virtual center would say that the VM is fine, but because it does not have that inside visibility. This is an alert indicating that the issue is in the virtual desktop. So you click on it, you get to see this list of virtual desktop, which is hosted on any given hypervisor. Have a look at it, we are not listing out virtual machines. We are telling you the name of the user who is logged in to that desktop. So monitoring every single desktop which is hosted on the hypervisor. So when a user calls in and says that James has a problem or Alan has a problem, you are not trying to find out which VM is connected to, then log into virtual center, see what is going on. Even then you don't know what's there because Anything which is happening within the desktop virtual center or any other tool does not have the visibility because they are looking at it from an external perspective. Whereas we have auto discovered all the desktop. I want to make a note here. You don't need to install any agents on these desktops. A single remote agent will connect to the hypervisor and also to the virtual desktops, copy a couple of lightweight executables and give you visibility of what is going on within the desktop. So, from a deployment standpoint or an implementation standpoint, you have 1,000 desktop, you don't need to install agents on the 1,000 desktop. Just a remote collector for four or five hypervisor and that will give you the visibility. Any questions before I proceed? Yes. Uh, what methods are you using to monitor each component? Is it the first one counters, SNS, all of the above? Can you go into that a little bit? Good question, yeah. Yes. Okay, so the question here is for the benefit of audience, the question is what technology does EG use to collect the data? Thing is, we, we normally say that EG agent is a single universal agent. What I mean by that is we talk the best possible language. Let's take an example. If it is VMware or Zen server, we interact with the APIs. If it is virtual desktop, we interact with the performance counters. If it is the SAN storage, we interact with the OEM specific command line prompt. So 
what is the best approach with which we could collect more data out of it that is the language we talk if it is network device SNMP so the answer is we are not going to rely on a single polling mechanism we use SNMP Perfmon APIs if it is Citrix Zen app we use PowerShell because Citrix has completely changed its architecture to PowerShell so whatever is the best means to talk we'll talk the language and the agent is not tied to an application Today you buy 10 licenses, you're monitoring 10 physical hosts, uh, which is which is Zen server, and tomorrow you have Microsoft Hyper-V. You don't need to be sitting there, okay, I don't have the licenses from this vendor. No, you could redeploy the license to monitor those servers because our licenses are not tied to any particular application. Did that answer your question? Thanks. Okay. We saw a latency, a user response time was slow, we clicked on, then we saw the holistic view, then uh, the EG solution highlighted where, which server was affected most, and then I click on it, all the layers were doing good, the inside view of the desktop was having a problem. These are all the users who are connected to the hypervisor, out of which Alan's desktop and James' desktop is having a critical alert. So what we're going to do now is, we're going to click on Alan's desktop. As soon as you click on Alan's desktop, you would get in-depth visibility about what is going on within the desktop. This is the visibility you would lack when you have solutions which, which look at it from an outside perspective, which is good. It's good to know how much resource you allocated, but when there is a problem, you need to know what is going on within the VDA. That is what we offer. So we look into the TCP traffic. Just have a look, it says hyphen guest. It's not from an outside perspective, it's telling you what is going on within the desktop. TCP traffic guest, disk activity guest, disk space guest, terminal to desktop connection, so in-depth visibility. If it is a Citrix session, we will talk about the HTX session. If it is a PC or IP, we'll, we'll talk about the latency in PC or IP. Okay, coming back to the problem, in Alan's desktop, we clicked on it, all the meshes are doing good, the TCP traffic layer is having a problem and in the, every test is tied to a bunch of measures and in that TCP retransmit is 26 percent. Let's pause for a second. TCP retransmit, the way TCP package works is from the source when the packets are being sent, the, when the destination receives the packet it has to send an acknowledgement packet saying that, okay, I've received the packets. Now send a new set of packets. If the acknowledging packet is not received, then the source will keep sending the same set of packets, which means high traffic in your infrastructure. This is in a physical. Just, just apply this in a virtual infrastructure. When the traffic is going to increase, all the virtual switches and the physical NIC connected to the virtual switch and the port goes will be affected. It could be a problem in Alan's desktop, but invariably as the traffic keeps increasing, it's going to affect all the other desktops. That is the biggest challenge. We would look into a desktop where everything would be working fine, but still the user would say slow. It is because there are two desktops on the same hypervisor, which are sharing all the resources, is having a TCP retransmit. So you fix this problem. Normally industry standard for TCP retransmit is like at any given point you have 5% it's okay. Anything above that is a problem. So you fix this TCP retransmit, all the ripple effects you saw in your infrastructure would be addressed. So this was an example how a problem in one tiny piece or one desktop in a hypervisor could, could affect the overall performance of a VDA farm. So it creates a myth that okay the whole farm is stagnant now. Everybody is logging into their tools and trying to pull and see what is going on. So if you have easy innovations, we give you that holistic view and tell you, okay, this is a problem, fix it, and everything else would be taken care of. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's a good question. From Lakeside, Lakeside's, I would say the good aspect of Lakeside. Lakeside has a good capability of looking into the desktop. They can read into the ICA channels pretty well. What it means by that is if you're purely relying on desktop visibility, just looking at the ICAs or the ICA session, you're good. If that is only the requirement you want, you're fine. But something else breaks. Let's say there is a traffic between the core switch to the hypervisor. 
or a virtual to physical neck configuration is having a problem, Lakeside cannot give you the visibility because their speciality is looking into the ICA stack, looking into all the latencies in this channel, which they do a pretty good job of. But again, the point we try to explain is it's not about your skill set and looking at a particular cross section, it's about the holistic view. Did that answer your question? compare your products as well. Oh, okay, okay, got it, <laughs> sorry. Okay, finally we got a question, so that's good. Two questions. Oh, yes, <laughs> first one. Okay, it's all good to go through all the screens and understand, okay, this is the slowness, then there is a map, then there is a server, all is fine, but, but when, when there is a knock team, especially if it's an offshore team who's sitting and working in a night shift, you tell them all these stories, they'll say, no, it, I, I don't care. <laughs> you ask me to go through all the multiple screens and tell me that this is a problem. Tell me a simpler way to do it. So it's not about data, it's also about usability. The first screen you get when you log into EG console is the alarm window. So here in this window, we clearly categorize red, orange, pink. What are the open issues? Not just listing them, listing them based on priority. So we are telling a tier one help desk team that you log in, these are all the open issues, try to contact the specific admin. If you have your troubleshooting system in place, EG is capable of integrating with existing troubleshooting system. We will send the ticket alerts so that tickets can be raised. So ease of usability. As Soon as you log in, you know what is going on in your infrastructure. So this is the root cause. You don't need to do multiple mouse click. Just do a single mouse click on that alert. It would zoom you into the problematic stack of that particular hypervisor or that desktop. So this is the cause. This is the effect. Everything is listed in the alarm window. Deep visibility into every layer, every tier, service-based correlated. Again, it's trying to summarize this, okay? We have tons of measures, but when you log in, you need to know what the problem is. That is also what we provide. Okay, uh, how does, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, we do. Uh, the older version, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, the question is, do we have visibility into Netscaler? The answer is yes. The older version of Netscaler, which, is, which was predominantly a load balancer, we monitor them using SNMP. But now Netscaler is pretty much used for application delivery. So we have a model called application delivery, Netscaler ADC. So we will look into the number of connections. We actually are doing a proof of concept when the Netscaler is kind of struggling to handle the request in terms of HTTP request. So we will look into the number of connections, different versions of ADCs. So answer is yes, we support it out of the box. Yes, we do. Because uh, the question was, do we monitor F5? Yes, we do, because the market share is kind of shifting towards FI is trying to compete as an application delivery mechanism with the Netscaler. When you have an infrastructure which is not necessarily Citrix specific, I've seen infrastructure like VMware, VDI, VUE, where the, where the application delivery is done using FI traffic manager. So we do support it out of the box. The whole concept we have is we look into the market trend. Who, in what way does the industry shaping now? That's why we have partnership, technology partnership with SAP, Citrix, and VMware, and we have contributed a lot towards Red Hat virtualization in terms of the open source forum. So, um, if you did not have a um, VDI desktop implementation right now, you had a straight Citrix environment, whether it was uh, one desktop server, one scaler, you could you could monitor the performance of Good question. I will repeat the question. I will try to summarize the question. Is, is EG Innovation a VDI specific monitoring tool or can it handle different infrastructures like example Zenapp, which has, which has a Zenapp farm with different variants, different versions with web interface? Uh, first, the answer is yes. We support 150 plus application out of the box. 
And also you gave the partial answer. I'm trying to focus on VDI. That's why I'm keep hitting on those terms. If it is a Zenso, Zenap infrastructure, the whole map you saw here will depict a web interface, Netscaler ADC web interface, or if you have access gateway, then the zone data collector, different version of Zenap. And in terms of the version, we, we, we are backward compatible because we've been around a little over a decade. So if you have MetaFrame, Presentation Server, 4.5, we don't just leave you and move on to 6.5. We, we give you an option to go. So the module we have, Citrix Zenap module, is kind of capable of handling all the minor variants in the versions. The amount of information you get will differ based on what is available. But yes, the different versions can be supported. Yes, sir. Good question. So let me summarize the question. Does EG have the capacity to look into application specific problems, especially looking into application specific error logs across different platforms? Let me add that to part of the question. Yes, again, we. I, I did mention about JP Morgan Chase and City. JP Morgan Chase, this cross section we are monitoring is not VDI. It's full of middle tier applications, front end, back end database servers. So even if you buy a basic license from EG, we believe that log monitoring is a key component. So we give you that option. So any log you want to monitor and parse the information, say that this particular condition, uh, the Tomcat application is running, if you see a word exception or if you see a word error, you have to alert the admin by parsing the log. We do it out of the box. And it's a basic model, not even a premium license. Thanks for the question. Any other questions? No? Okay. So now we've seen the uh, 10 minutes. Okay. Good time. So we've seen the VDI service. This is how EG handles the VDI infrastructure. Okay. The service manager, like Keith mentioned, the approach is a general practitioner. Our CEO tries to use this word pretty common. I'm kind of wary of using it because I've seen what we can do with Oracle monitoring, SQL, Apache monitoring. We, we are pretty deep in terms of what visibility we provide. But, but on a high level, this is the code. Make sure you give a solution which can tell you that this is the direction your problem is so that you're not spending the time. The mean time to repair a problem is cut down so it will directly impact the return of investment if you want to talk the language of management. So looking into all the pieces. and. Monitor VDA services, treat them as services, not silos. Right size, we have in-depth reporting capabilities. We would tell you, this is the VDA service. Currently, you're handling these many users. When your user count grows, this much IOPS is needed. We would give you prediction report, capacity planning report out of the box. So top users, out of all the thousand users, which user is taking up more resources? We will list you based on Login time, if somebody says that I logged in on Monday evening after 7 o'clock and I had a slow session, first you need to validate whether he logged in. We will tell you what login times were, when did we log out, to what server he was connected to, can be Zen app or Zen desktop, he will give you that visibility and all the resource usage and what applications he accessed. If it is a Zen app, we will tell you whether he was accessing an Outlook or he was streaming a video in a Windows Media Player. Track user session. Uh, if the user had five different sessions, he comes in and says that my session yesterday was slow and he randomly gives you a time at 11 o'clock. You could easily track. We would track and tell you when did the sessions happen, what are all the different sessions we had, when did it end, and all the resource usage. So you could narrow down and tell, okay, all the four sessions you were doing what you were supposed to do. On the fifth session, you were streaming something which is not needed. So that took the resources. And then VDA bottlenecks. I told about moving to production. How do you, rather than throwing the storage and the disk, how do you scale proportionally? We give you the capacity planning reports here. In this cluster, cluster you are handling these many VMs. If you move to additional VM, how much resource do you need? 
So that is also available. Preemptive detection and alerting. So broad coverage, it's like you, you, your infrastructure can change. You might bring in a different storage unit and you might have a different cross section which, which is going to be moved to Microsoft Hyper-V. You don't need to be worried about the monitoring aspect. This toolkit will, will cater to the changes in your infrastructure. Auto base landing. This is pretty much about one of the key features in the product. When there is an information or like a user session or TCP session which constantly changes over a period of time, we, we, lend, uh, we lend some flexibility by telling the system that you don't need to define threshold manually. We also have an option where you could tell the system, look at my past data and based on that calculate the threshold and apply the threshold. So auto baselining of your infrastructure is also available. Yes. The question, I didn't get the question. Oh, so how is product licensed by physical server and can you provide this question? Okay, the question is how is the product licensed, which I would answer. Uh, is it by physical server? I'll take care of that question. Can you provide the list price? Uh, my friend all would not like <laughs> giving the list price, so I'm not going to do that. So the, the first two part is the licensing model is a server-based licensing. Let's take an example. If you have 10 ESX servers, it is 10 licenses. If you have 10 Zen servers, it's 10 licenses. On top of the Zen server, you have 20 virtual machines. Everything would be covered in that one license. But if there is a VM sitting on that hypervisor and that VM has an application like Zenapp or a Oracle or a Microsoft SQL, you need visibility into that, then you need an additional license which is exactly the scenario with Dominic. He needs additional license to get the complete visibility. So, <laughs> so again, I'll summarize it. Uh, it's it's server-based licensing. Uh, for one physical server, one license. You have multiple applications running in the same server. It's one license. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. That's a good question. So, so <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, the question from Dominic is like, uh, because I took a poke at him, he's trying to give me a tough question here. So, okay. Uh, thing is, the, the our CEO always says like, you you monitor what you control. If if a firewall failure is going to affect your user session and you're in charge of that user session or VDA section, then it's a point of concern. The answer to the question in terms of what you want to cover, uh, I'm not saying that throw in all the license monitor with EG. If these are, all, you have to identify what are all your core components that will have an impact on your user session or application delivery, try to monitor that. That would be a good starting point. I think I answered your question. Yes. Okay. So basically like firewall and switches, routers, whatever is all covered. Yes, covered. You get the server license. Yes, yes. And uh, on, on the network device part, we don't charge for devices. So around 30 devices, if you have Cisco routers and switches, it's just one license. So you don't charge for device. That's something good to know. I don't want to go through the real world example. There's five, five more minutes. I'll, I'm happy to take some questions, some comments, or just feel free, guys. Yes. Is it something you can talk about, like how they use the technology? Uh, one time, Srinivas said that they use it for managed services and their managed services. Yes. I don't know how much you know about it. You know about it. I do have minimal details about them. They are based out of, I think, in our central from southern Texas. Or, uh, so what, what we did with uh, all scripts was they, they, they required a lot of customization for their business unit. It's a management service offer they are providing. 
particular customization has to be done. I think it's a combination of Zen app and also uh, some application monitoring. That that's my understanding knowledge because I'm predominantly responsible for the southwest region. So. This is the time we'll try that blackout, right? <laughs> okay, now with a few minutes I can talk about the in and out monitoring. VDI or virtual so virtualization monitoring, our CAO wrote an article about it sometime back or two or three years when, when the industry was getting into understanding how virtualization is going to work. Outside monitoring, inside monitoring. Uh, interestingly, we were having lunch. I was having lunch with him in an in burger place. Right? So he was, I was asking him, uh, what is this in and out monitoring? He smiled at me and started explaining what it is. Outside view is what a virtual center or a Zen center offers, which is good. How much resource is being allocated, all those informations are handy. But when a problem happens, you need to do a deep dive into the desktop. That is the inside view which we offer, which is our patented technology. If you go to any other vendor, I could tell you that they would ask you to deploy agents on the desktop for them to provide that kind of visibility. But with EG, you just need Windows Remote Connection and copy a couple of lightweight executables. You would know what is happening in the desktop. So that's the in and out monitoring, which is a patent to technology, which is, which is a clear, clear difference when you're trying to troubleshoot a problem. Any questions? Any questions? You're done, right? So, Two uh, moments. Sanji, one question. How do you integrate with like an organization as an uh, other team? Mm -hmm. Open view, unit center, one. You know, how do you how do you work with this with this kind of tool? Okay. The question is how you already made the investments. Mm. Yeah. So the question from Keith is how do we integrate with solutions which are already there? Mm. You don't want to go in and wreck the ship and say that I'm, I'm going to remove all the tools have easy in it. What we do is we have out of the box integration for SCOM, a full fledged integration module. With HP OpenView, IBM Tivoli, we could integrate. The basic thumb rule we follow is SNMP. Most of these consoles will listen into SNMP traps and they will parse the information and display it. So we are capable of sending SNMP traps and so that that can be concise. It's very minimal work that can be sent across and can be integrated. Splunk, Splunk is pretty much, we haven't come across a scenario where Splunk and EG integration was talked about because Splunk is predominantly a log mining solution. The question about logs, okay, they do a pretty good job of digging all the logs and give it, giving it in a dashboard. So if an application is failing, they would look into all the logs and give it. But with, for us, it's just part of what we do because you can't just rely on logs because when an error has happened, only then the log is being populated with the errors. We try to be more proactive. So integrating with the law, uh, Splunk has not come across. Yes. So I, I have a lightning question. Mm -hmm. You mentioned install inside the guest. If so, why is that not considered in there? That's a good question. Okay. The question is, are the lightweight executables you mentioned installed inside the guest? If so, why is that not considered as an agent? Okay. The name, the terminology itself gives an indication about what's an agent and a lightweight agent. The EG agent is a full-fledged agent which can monitor every application and then and you could monitor Oracle or Citrix, anything. But a lightweight agent is specifically designed so that it can only provide inside visibility from the desktops or the VM. It has a much lesser sizing. So you wouldn't compare it with a full-fledged agent because it's specifically designed for that inside visibility of the desktop. Also, I would like to add another point to it. If you don't even want that lightweight agent to be there, you, you, you want, you're ready to roll out VM-specific agent rather than creating remote connection, we also have a different approach of having VM-specific. So the question is, uh, it's specifically designed for inside view of the VMs, whereas an agent can do uh, monitoring of all the 150 applications we support out of the box. Okay. Well, question. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear. Which one is better? The full version or the lightweight, lots of sample, very granular level? Uh, the full version. 
the lightweight is just part of our monitoring approach. It's it's not an agent. So uh, with EG, it's just the full version. You, we don't sell enterprise or advanced or basic. When you buy EG, you buy AG. You have all the capability. You know. I didn't repeat the question. <laughs> okay, so we have come to the uh, to the end of our uh, seminar, seminar slash webinar. So as a next uh, step, uh, we definitely, if you're interested to pursue this further, we can talk to you, talk to your GTC representative. Uh, one of the things that we have done with the proper um, um, uh, time, you know, like to scheduling and stuff, we can do a proof of concept. And, and EG has been very generous in helping us to do proof of concepts but of course we have to plan it better you know we have to plan the proof of concept one thing that we have learned uh, you know recently definitely f feedback from some some of our customers is that um, we cannot just go and just drop it in and then surprise different groups different silos you know within the organization and some of them may not want to participate so we have to plan it better and get high level buy-in first um, executive sponsorship so that we can get like the networking group the storage group the uh, database group you know the security groups all on the same page you know so that the POC can get really they can get real um, testing of the solution because sometimes when, when it wasn't planned right and we take responsibility for that you know also uh, because sometimes we are very anxious because we have come to believe in it because it has solved some real problems for us. Sometimes we are hasty and like, let's just drop it in and see what, what it can do you know, for you. And we'll try to find a solution to this specific problem. But if it's not going to be uh, covering and looking at the entire, again, it's a holistic solution. If it's not going to look at the entire infrastructure, we're not going to be able to get the most out of the POC. And then the customer is not going to really be able to find out what it can do you know so so that's why we if we if you're interested in a POC we need to plan it uh, and uh, schedule it at the right time with the right resources and get buy-in from the different silos any other questions thank you so much again uh, we have a uh, if you can give us an evaluation we're trying something new uh, if you don't mind give us an evaluation of today's uh, event and then uh, next week usually we're gonna give you what's going to be uh, covered next week. Next week, we're going to have Citrix go to assist uh, uh, technology. They have even now ticket, ticketing, you know, keeping track of uh, help desk tickets and all that stuff as, as part of the Citrix go to assist. So we use that. That's another technology that we use in our managed services and cloud services and in our technical support. You know, we use go to assist to support our customers after technology is in place. So uh, if you would like to attend, you know, just give us, l let us know if you're interested in next week. And if you don't mind, give us an evaluation of today's event. There's only, uh, I think, four or five questions. So thank you so much again, and we look forward to seeing you in future events.